Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host Anel. Anel, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, okay. <laughs> Alright, this is like episode number 95. Um, no Free Will with Sam Harris Gets Right and Wrong Part 2. This might turn out to be a three or four part series, but it's about Sam's ha Sam Harris's landmark, pioneering book, um, Free Will, that came out March 3rd, 2012. Now, the reason it's such a landmark is like Harris is the three time New York Times best selling um, author, and this is probably like the only book I, I think on Free Will. A recent refutation that's not self-published. It's published by Simon and Schuster. It's all over the place. It's led to a you know to a huge amount of coverage in 2012, and he's done the world a great service uh, with this. Okay, before we get into like you know kind of like commenting on the book, just let's briefly go over again what we mean when we say we have free will, why it's uh, impossible, and why <clears throat> this whole effort. To um, to show the world that we don't have free will is like so hugely important. Yes. All right. So, like, what do we mean when we say we have free will? Free will is the ability to make decisions that are independent of one's genetics and conditioning. Okay. And another way of understanding it is like, if we had a free will, we could make decisions independent of things that we're not in control of. For example, like our unconscious, you know, we have, if, if our unconscious is taking part in our decisions, that's something that we're not in control of. Okay, and why is, like, what we're doing so important? Well, the belief in free will is, touches everything anybody does, thinks, or says. I mean, it's, in to, it's a total paradigm that's, that's guiding our society. It's incorrect. Okay. All right. That, it's the that, biggest thing ever. How's that? It is the biggest thing ever. John. Ever. But Except that we found life on an alien, another planet. I mean, I, I, that might be a little bigger. No, probably not. <laughs> well, no, or, or if, no, no. You know what would be bigger? If we found out for sure what happens after we die. Yeah. That'd be big. I don't know. It's close, but yeah. yeah. Or another thing would be bigger, and it, it hasn't happened, but like if somebody like develops like a happiness pill, a happy pill makes everyone blissed out, you know, no negative side effects. Or a time effects. machine into the future. I don't well, think the past is possible. I, I figured out why, but I don't, yeah, time into machine. The future. I don't think that'd be possible. Into the future. You take a, you take a thing to outer space and you live in outer space for six months, and when you come back, it's like twenty years later. Like, I don't know. I'm right. just saying that might be. <laughs> <laughs> or, or humans learn how that, to fly. We mate with birds and we have wings. Uh, this is crazy <laughs> talk. What would be bigger? I don't think anything. <laughs> right. Another thing. I'm is just coming up a, with crazy things. A goodness things. pill. If you have a pill or something, that makes of all, all. No, that like wouldn't angels. be there because you might still get depressed. I think the happiness pill, where you never get depressed. I hear you. Or feel any pain. Okay. Yeah. I'm sort of, yeah. All right. So again. Anyway, it's the biggest thing ever. This is the biggest thing ever. It's uh, just like huge, it's humongous. Huge. It's yeah. Epic. Titanic. John Titanic, Searle. Yeah. It's, it's bigger than Einstein, Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, Combined. and Darwin. Combined. I think so. Yes. All right. Uh, so like. We're, we're, we're just kind of like reading from this book and kind of like talking about it now. Like on page 15, he makes a mistake, and it's the same mistake. Yes, the, and it's a mistake. The great Sam Harris made a mistake? He's, yes, well, yeah, that's, you know, he's made a few mistakes in this book, but that's why you know, we're okay. reviewing it. But again, it's a landmark book. He's done the, the world a huge favor with this book. Okay, now the mistake, it's the same mistake Dan, Daniel Wegner, a Harvard psychologist, uh, made with his classic 2002 book, uh, the illusion of conscious will. It's the same mistake also that um, some other people make. God, I'm so hooked on what this mistake could be. All right, here's the thing. Here it is. All right. Okay. Page. Why don't you read it to me and see if I catch it? Uh, okay. It's first time. I haven't, there's no script here. Cool. All right. It's on page 15. He says, The endurance of this notion is attributable to the fact <laughs> that most of us feel that we freely author our own thoughts and actions comma, however difficult, or um, parentheses, however difficult it may be to make sense of this in, Ill, in logical or scientific terms, uh, close parentheses, thus the idea of free will emerges from a felt experience. Now, see if you catch the mistake. He's saying that people believe in free will because they feel that they're making their own right. decisions? That's why people believe in free will. Right, I right. think that's I think that's right. That's why. No, people, no, no. Think about it. They it's feel, a, feel just because said, they feel it doesn't mean anything. He says it's a feeling. All right, we got to explore. What you is don't a feeling? That, you don't think free will is a feeling? I don't. I think it's an adonic imperative to feel. You feel better about yourself believing in free will. It's just a feeling. Define feeling. Chemicals within my body that make me feel good or bad. 
again, I'm a psychologist, so I know this like a feeling. You are? Yes, a feeling is an emotion. Self proclaimed. Yeah, okay. I did like before the show. I did 140 episodes of like the self proclaimed psychologist. All right, so th let's get this thing. Because first I heard. So you're saying that Sam Harris is saying that people believe in free will because they feel as if they're making decisions. Right. I, I think that's why people believe in free will. They, uh, feelings are not facts. That's why we're going to talk about this. All right. A feeling is an emotion. Yes. It's like when you feel something, it's either a sensory perception. You feel like heat. You feel cold. You feel hungry. It's a feeling like that. Or it's like an emotion like anger, sadness, right. happiness, fear. Okay. This is an emotion. Um, we don't feel that we have a free will. Um, no, I said I feel people feel that they make un they feel that they make decisions that they make. But that's not, not a feeling. It's it's a conclusion. In other words, people are saying, well, like I just made this decision, and I conclude rationally, you know, based on reason or whatever, that it was completely up to me. That nothing that I was not in control of was, was but a lot of people just feel they have free will. They just feel that's intuitively correct. That's what I'm saying. It's not a feeling. So what is it? So why do people believe they have free will? Because, all right. He says it's a feeling that the people have. The, the reason why a lot of people believe it is because, like, St. Augustine in 530 A.D., he wrote this book on free will, you know, De Libra Arbitrio. Yeah, 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 that's true. St. Augustine you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, so, like, you know, he's St. Augustine. So, basically, it's part of the church theology, and Judaism is the same. They believe in free will. So, like, for a lot of people, you got to realize, if you're a church, you know, a uh, if you're religious, you go to a church singing a guy or whatever, and the church tells you you have free will, and they tell you, well, if you don't believe kind of like what we say, then you're like putting yourself at risk for eternal damnation. So like people don't even think about this. People like a lot of people believe in free will because they've never thought about it. They say, well, the church says it, it must be true. But according to you, the hedonic imperative, if someone feels good, better about themselves because they believe in free will versus feeling worse, they will continue to believe something because they feel good right but that's a feeling that's like interfering in others so they have free will they feel good about themselves let's go over like why saint Augustine. and i don't know why you're so threatened about a feeling just because people have feelings doesn't make it facts because well i know but i might like, feel like uh i don't know I, I when i was little i felt that santa claus was real no i know but like this is like such a confusing topic i wouldn't be threatened by the feeling argument so you're it, saying he's wrong i think he's right people believe in free will because they feel right, that they have gonna, it. like we'll spend the whole show on no this. no let's move on <laughs> no um saint augustine okay the reason that he um that's why people believe in free because of saint augustine i never even heard of saint Augustine until, like no i know a couple months ago that's not why i felt that i thought i had free will up until a few years ago when i you thought came I, and, and like, to my senses the but way i never heard of saint augustine so that's not people, why all right i felt i had it that's the why. basic reason people "Quote unquote," believe in free will. That it's a belief. It's like it's not a feeling. It's a belief. Besides it's being psychotic and insane. It's, it's like because when they're like three, four years old, five years old, you know, their parents yeah. tell them, you know, you did this of your own free will, you know. So that's why we're going to punish you. It's something we're taught, you know. But but also when you're younger and someone says you have free will, do you ha have it? You feel better internally believing you have. Then if you say you don't have free will, they get they get depressed. So it's what you're feeling about the subject is. All right, great. How you feel about yourself. People like things that make them feel good. So if it feels better, or you feel better about yourself believing in free will, you're going to believe it. That's all right. I agree completely. So Total you... selfishness and hedonic, you know, going towards pleasure and away from pain. I don't want to believe something that makes me feel depressed and miserable. So I, I, I happen to think believing that I don't have free will makes me... It makes me feel better. I have my own reasons. Right, again, but you're That's saying the mistakes that, that I've made, yeah. your belief that you don't have a free will leads to feelings. So it's a different thing having the Since belief Since I started studying, I feel better and about my life not that, believing in free will. Right. If I, believed, if I felt better about my life believing in free will, then I would believe it. Okay. But it's best for now, me to not... It's all conditioning. We're, I had things happen in my past that I believed... If I made that terrible mistake, I was a bad person, but then I so I felt depressed. But then I realized if I had no choice but to make the mistake, after meeting you and discussing the topic in about two seconds, I got it. My whole world changed. I felt much better about my entire life that I didn't make any mistakes. I had no control over it. Right, so I was just along for the ride based on my causality, how my parents raised me and other things. St. Augustine. It freed me. Yes, and you felt <laughs> so good ironic. about that. You felt good about it. Freed that. me? But it's a, you get it? It's a feel, yes, it's a good By feeling. not believing in free will, I freed my whole psyche. Shut up. Okay. St. <laughs> Augustine. All right, he didn't, St. Augustine, 
Steen didn't feel that he had a free will. What how he got to yeah, free will is like he's got this this like premise, this underlying premise that God is all good. Okay, that's Christian theology. The God is all good. It's Jewish theology. Yes. So he says to himself, if God is all good, what accounts for the evil in the world? So like he says, well, if, if God is all good, we can't blame him. So it's got to be our fault. So it was a conclusion based on what An I assumption. would consider a faulty premise. So it's yeah. not a feeling. It's a conclusion. It's a rational, intellectual mistake that, that people make. For you, okay. You got it? All right. But it's not a feeling. A feeling is an emotion. I, f I feel better. Some people feel better about themselves. That's chemicals, do endorphins, whatever, dopamine is released because they believe in free will. All right, you got to understand. They're addicted there, to it like a there, drug. There's a difference between what, what um, makes the illusion of free will and how we feel about how we believe about human will. In other right, words, I like, see what you're saying. Right. It's so, okay. Right. Okay. And again, you're right. Like people believe in free will because it makes them feel better to believe in Based free will. Based on their ca causal history and conditioning. Right. But, but their belief in free but will. But look what is happened to me. Feeling. I got to a point where not believing in free will made me feel better. Well, yes. I I'm know. still agreeing it's conditioning. That's the thing. Well, absolutely. So, all right. All right. Page 15, you have a problem with. I'm writing that down. I'm going to read it later. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we go to page 16. Oh, one page. And he's got a kind of a confusing. <laughs> refutation of compatibilism now before compatibilism is like that some philosophers and it doesn't make, doesn't make sense but some philosophers understand they accept that everything has a cause the determinism is like the fundamental law of the universe you know everything must have a cause but then they still say yeah I believe that everything have a has a cause but we still have free will okay. now and the reason that how they get to this conclusion one they'll do a classic straw man argument. They'll say, well, free will doesn't mean that I can choose what I decide regardless of things, are, um, whether things are like in or, or not in my control. Free will means that I can like choose what I decide because I'm, I'm deciding what I want to decide. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say that, that free will means that, that I could have chosen to do, do otherwise, but that kind of like goes against causality. But anyway... Here's, here's what Harris has to say about this. Okay, um, the endurance of this notion is attributable to the... Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> I'm on page Just so you know, we're trying to get this uh, show to the mass media, with a mass audience, regular people. When you say compatible... Compa compa no, I know. I heard, I heard I, I don't, I'm, I'm in... I, I'm yeah. like a, the world, I think I'm the world's greatest philosopher. I, don't, I mean, I'm just going to say that there's no free will, not because of compatibilism or... Because we're realists. Yeah. No. I mean, a regular person doesn't want to hear what compatibilism. I don't even know what it means. I right. Mean, it's and, just and, and philosophy. Incomprehensible gibberish. So uh, just, yeah. Yeah. And, and so actually, I even, what did you mean by that? Compatibilism. No, no. You said Sam Harris made a mistake on page 16. He gets compatibilism wrong. Right. Let me, so I'll read so it. So it's already confusing. I'll read so what it, do you okay. mean by that? Yeah. He confuses it a bit. Uh, he corrects himself later, but he goes. He says, today the only philosophically respectable way to endorse free will is to be a compatibilist. Oh, to be a compatibilist. Okay. Because we know the determinism in every sense relevant to human behavior is true. Define compatibilism for me real quick. C compatibilism basically is that they believe... They, they accept the fact that there's determinism, but they still believe in free will. So, like, what Harris is saying... That's is, crazy. No, I know. Bill Carter. Yes. They know that cause and effect is true and determined, but they still believe in free will? Right. How do they make that leap? Well, it's a straw man argument. What Basically, does that mean, straw they man argument? Read, there you go again. Straw man argument... False is, argument? In philosophies, yeah. It's like when you, when you present an argument that's not relevant to what the the, the, oh, the it's matter like a, it's like hand. a tangent exactly it's like the, he they're 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 kind of they redefine free will so then they can have a for example you know the idea of like that free will to compatibilists would mean that we are free to to that no some compatibilists say that like we have a free will because we are making this, the decision. It's us, and that's so a what? compatibilist argument. Exactly. It's, it's not what the debate is about. Oh, it's I see. That's a straw man argument. It's not what the right. debate is about. It's when you change the meaning of what you're arguing in order to like then present to win the argument. Consequential, right? So Sam Harris is saying what about compatibilists? Well, I'm going to read it again. Okay. Today, the only philosophically respectable way to endorse free will is to be a compatibilist. Because we There's know no respectable way to endorse real, sorry. <laughs> because we know the determinism in every sense relevant to human behavior is true. 
Okay, now that the reason that doesn't make sense is because, like, again, um, combat compatibilists accept that free will, that determinism is true. So, like, um, they're not compatible. They're incompatible. You can't have both. Right. And so, in other words, it's not a respect. It's also it's not a respectable way to. Um, yeah, he's got that wrong. You found will. something that Sam Harris got wrong. It's a deceitful. It's not way. a respectable way. There is no respectable and, way to endorse free will. Zero. Right. And what I so think he's what saying he mean, that's the only respectable way. Right. He, he's crazy. He's out of his mind. No, no, it's not respectable. And I think what he meant to say, you know, was that it's the only Sam, philosoph come on, Sam. philosophically. Um, Kind of like conventional or, or widely accepted way. Yeah, but it's not. It's it's definitely not respectable because it's anything like, promoting free will is totally <laughs> non. It doesn't make any sense. It's not respectable at all. I don't care. Not one iota of respect for anyone who will, could even dream of free will. It's, so okay. Again, now he he clarifies. So I'm glad you found something. Right. So he now he he corrects himself a bit. You know, <laughs> the next you know, a little further down, he says, however, that free will. The, the free will that compatibilists defend is not the free will that most people feel they have. Now, again, he it's uses confusing. that feel word. Right, so no, he's right. He's, he's basically saying what we're saying, that compatibilists will use a straw man definition of free will. You know, they're not addressing what we mean when we say we have free will. Anybody who believes in determinism and also thinks you believe can have free will at the same time is totally nuts and insane. Absolutely. I mean, it's the craziest thing I've ever. How can you, you have can't both? Can't blame them. I know. Everything's cause and effect. Yet I circumvent that and make decisions outside of that. I mean, it's one or the other. Yes. Take. Oh, that's what I used to talk, talk about. My bi spiritual. My new. I, that drives me. I get very upset when I hear that. Just I, so you know, when people I take am. it both. I mean, that's taking it both ways. And the thing how is, like, you, when would you have free will? When wouldn't you? When it's convenient. I know. It's 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 like inconsistent. It's like yeah. saying I'll just decide whenever I free will when it's most convenient. Makes me look the the best. And when I look when I don't look so great, then it's God's will, you know. But when I do some good things, it's me. I mean, the whole thing is so ridiculous. I know. And again, the good thing is we can't blame one or the people. other. We can't blame us. You know, we can't logically blame them. It's they hypocritical. Them. It's double talk. It's gibberish. It's like the universe making them do that. It's not right. All right. So all right. So like, then he says a little further down. He kind of like describes his version of one version of compatibilism. He says compatibilists generally claim that a person is free as long as he is free from any outer or inner, inner compulsions that would prevent him from acting on his actual desires and intentions. Okay, and he gets this right. That absolutely. But think about that. Like, why is that compatibilism like absurd? <laughs> well, because like you know. Basically, they're saying that uh, we have a free will again if we can like make a decision that is free from um, inner and outer compulsions um, that prevent him from acting on his actual desires and intentions. The thing is, like, we don't decide our actual desires and intentions. Our actual our desires and intentions all have causes. Okay, and that's the thing. So, like, if you're arguing about that, basically, this compatibilist argument is arguing arguing for a will. Yes, we have a will in that sense, but it's not free of causality. We're not refuting desires and intentions and wants. We're saying you can't choose your desires, intentions, and wants. So, I, there's no refu everyone has. I have desires, and I, I desire somebody in my life to call me. But I, but I mean, I, I can't choose that. I just have that desire. That's in other words, I, I desire what I desire, but I can't choose what I desire. There's no, what I mean, the fact that people have desires and, and intentions. No, I know, I know. Doesn't mean anything. And again, like you know, so they're what? they're basically ignoring causality with that definition. In they're, fact, I wish I desired not to desire what I desire because. Right, they're, they're claiming. I'm that miserable because this person's not calling me. I, do you, don't you think I would tell you <laughs> I don't desire that anymore? Wouldn't I be I know. free? But I can't help it. I oh, know. Right. No, it's true. We don't. All right, choose you got it. Desires. You got it. You just got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Okay. Terrific. So then we're on to page 20. This is going to take us maybe five episodes. No, we got That's time. all right. Page Absolutely. 20. All right. Um, then on page 20, he, he offers a concise definition. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> if my co-host had a free will, he would have had this perfectly <laughs> done in advance. All right. Here, proof, here's proof another positive. No, no. Th yeah, this is another kind of like explanation, another refutation of compatibilism that he offers. And it's about being able to do otherwise, okay? Because like one of like the the definitions of free will compatibilists will use is like free will, is, or this might actually be lived. I don't know. 
free will is um, the, uh, that we could have done otherwise. That, you know, we didn't have to choose the way we chose. We didn't have to do what we did. We could have acted otherwise. So like they say, if we could have acted otherwise, that's a demonstration we have free will. Okay, here's how Sam Harris um, addresses it. Don't get me started with this one. <laughs> All right. And there is no way I can influence my desires. Okay, he's from before. For what tools of influence would I use? Other desires, right? Like, you know, to say that I would have done otherwise had I wanted to is simply to say that I would have lived in a different universe had I been in a different universe. All right, compatibilism amounts to nothing more than an assertion of the following creed. A puppet is free as long as he loves his strings. Do you really want me to comment on this? Absolutely. If you could have done otherwise, why didn't you? Exactly. And you want to, you want, let's explain to the audience why you couldn't have done otherwise. Because, again, the only way we could have done otherwise would have been if the universe would have been otherwise. Yeah. It obviously the wasn't. of the universe, your atoms, your core, everything about you, the moment before that. I mean, that's... Right, just the fact, the fact that... It, yeah, let's um, talk to the people. If you could have done otherwise, which camera? Why didn't you? Number two, or three. Yeah. So whatever you regret in your life, you didn't have a free will, you were doing the best you could, you made a mistake, you, you, I don't know if we're allowed to curse, but you did, you no. fucked something up, Parker, you messed something up, <laughs> you, you regret it, but if you could have done otherwise, well now, looking back at it, you have more information, you're a different person, you're a different time and space, you look back and said, I should have done this, that, and the other thing, but at that time, you didn't know any better, so if you could have done otherwise, why didn't you? Answer that and call it, me. I exactly. Know, I mean, and again, again, if the universe would have been otherwise... That's the only way we could have done otherwise. Well, if everything but were different, then I wouldn't have... Yeah, okay, well... Obviously, if we did something, then the universe wasn't otherwise. Correct. That's the thing. I could have done otherwise if everything about me was different, including the entire universe. All right, so, so the, the basic, you know, so the fact on this, we could not have otherwise, done otherwise because we were not otherwise and the universe was You're always doing otherwise. the best you can. That's the other thing. You're always doing the best you can with everything that's happening. That's another thing. All of this, the invisible this, pressures, this, psychic things... Right. Money pressures, every climate, you know, that's how you feel. Yeah. You're always doing the best you can. Even, even if you can't get out of bed for a week, that's the best you can do at the time. Right. What you, What is this bi-spiritual thing you said? But People take the free will thing both ways. So that's another to example of how they... bisexual, you go both ways. No, so that's another you take example. take free will, you don't have... Yeah. That's another example. I in made up words, that word, people, bi-spiritual. Right. No, so so people will say, you know, like, people, when you say, like, to, to, a per yeah. to a person, you know, like, you know, well, you know, um, that person was doing the best they could. Correct. You know? You know, I was doing the best I could. You know, don't blame and stuff. That's a, that. When they say that, they they're understanding. They're refuting free will, right? There. Right, right. So that's another kind of like contradiction. All right, all right. So like, so basically, Harris has offered two arguments against compatibilism. Compatibilism is something that the founder of American psychology, William James, called a wretched sub, 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 subterfuge, and Immanuel Kant called it. Um, no, I think it was Kant called it a wretched subterfuge. I don't know. But basically, it's like people understand that it just makes no sense. The compatibilist argument is just complete illogic. And people, you know, again, like, it's another, like, this, this illusion of free will is so persistent, so pervasive, mm -hmm. it, it basically overrides people re people's reason. People kind of, like, make up stuff that's disingenuous. It's, it's not... Um, respectable, you know, in terms of, like, logic, in order to keep it. it you know, all right, People so what else? People who believe in free will are totally illogical. They're totally, basically, intoxicated, inebriated. They don't make any sense, ever. And uh, that's how I, you know, that's how I see it. I mean, all right. If you believe in free will, you've got to be drunk or something. I mean, it's not, right. there's no reason to it. It's, no, I know. we got, we got okay, three, three and a half minutes, minutes left. And, like, this is going to take a little more time to go through... So, like, instead of going through this now, let's go through our commercials and stuff and why this is so important, right? Cause you, like, can't, you can't start with it? We'll, we'll, st we'll finish, yeah, but basically, basically, Sam Harris gets that free will is impossible, which is great, and that's what this book is about, but he believes, according to this book, that true randomness exists. That oh. some, yeah, oh, I know. Sam, I know. Sam. Sam, you got to, you can't be intimidated by the yeah. quantum mechanics, by the Copenhagen interpretation. Just think about it. Sam, you're so smart, Sam. Oh. 
He'll he'll get it. He'll get it. He he'll, believes that randomness exists. Yeah. So like it we'll, does, doesn't really matter, but still. We'll we'll address this oh, on the next like episode. Nice. So this is like part <laughs> two. I know we're gonna go into part three. All right, commercials. This show like is on every Thursday in White Plains. You know because of Verizon FiOS, it also goes to Ardsley, Scarsdale. You know, and like a few other um, towns in Westchester oh, County. That's terrific. That's a wealthy area. That's I terrific. know, and and it also is like we 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 now are showing this in Manhattan. Okay, so it's getting a lot of reach. And talk about your show, your, the one you produce. Should we start sending this to Chicago and L.A.? To those? We've, we've thought about that. I'd like to. Yeah, well, you've got to work yeah. on that. Uh, what it, my show is really a little different because it's live. It's live every other week. I think for December, January, and February, we're going to do once a month because it's just too cold and it's too windy and I don't want to walk around freezing. In the, it's, a, it's at 11 o'clock, so it's kind of late. I have a full-time job. But anyway, we refute free will, uh, no free will. <laughs> 11 o'clock on MNN2, and we take phone calls, like what I said, every other week for about 10 months of the year. Please call us and tell me what you think. Okay. And again, and I just want to say, I want to make a commercial. You have nothing to lose by watching our shows because the only thing you're going to lose, I don't know which camera, but the only thing you're going to lose is something you don't have in the first place, which is your belief in free will. You don't have it, you're only going to lose something you didn't have to begin with, so you're playing with house money in a way. Right. You're going okay. to lose your sense of free will. Your and, free will. You and our show, be. No Free Will, every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, Channel 56, Time Warner in Manhattan. MNN2, I think it's 56. MNN2, right, the Lifestyle Channel. Or it's also like live through the internet. Okay, you can watch it and you can call in if you're watching it live. MNN.org. At okay. 11 o'clock, go to and Channel 2. We still got yeah. another minute. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. The meetup. We've got a meetup. The meetup is what started all of this, okay? You know, I founded a meetup on April 7th, 2010, knowing, you know, I based it in Manhattan because I knew that, like, when people are searching for a, a meetup in Manhattan, they wouldn't join the group, perhaps. They wouldn't, like, come to the meetings, but they'd see it every time they're looking for a group in, in midtime Manhattan. And that's how we created the buzz. It's that's just a how, numbers like, game, population wise. If you put it in White Plains, people even see it in Manhattan. We're not going to go out to White planes drive or take you know so we so you have a big much bigger population base it's like a, it's a quick commercial game. it's a yeah. quick commercial like you know free advertising all right we got like 30 seconds so like all right so now yeah in the next episode we're going to explore more of harris's like you know landmark milestone you know very very important book but he gets a few things wrong again but the main thing is he gets it but right but even if he gets the randomness thing wrong it doesn't matter but he, if he's it's just a little upsetting he would get something like that wrong but it still doesn't prove free will. I know it's upsetting because, like, you got people have to understand. Sam, you got to understand. Nothing happens without a cause. It's conceptually impossible. All right, we'll get into that next episode. Thanks for watching. See you uh, next time. Thanks.